For centuries, young children and adults have been captivated by the incredible story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three young men who stood up to the mighty King Nebuchadnezzar. The actions of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel represent a response that is common in our time, civil disobedience. This entails purposeful personal opposition to a government decree that violates God's standards. A massive golden statue was commissioned by King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Nebuchadnezzar the king made a gold-plated image, whose height, including the pedestal, was 60 cubits, 90 feet, and its width, 6 cubits, 9 feet. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent word to assemble the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and lawyers, and all the chief officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and lawyers, and all the chief officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and speakers of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, four-stringed harp, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. So when the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and speakers of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. The golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar had commissioned must have been magnificent. It stood 90 feet tall. The king may have set it up to consolidate his power, gathering all classes of his officials for a grand ceremony. These rulers were to attend the dedication of the statue erected by King Nebuchadnezzar and fall face down in worship of it. Anyone who refused this command risked death by being thrown into a blazing fire furnace. Because Nebuchadnezzar wanted to establish himself as the supreme religious authority in Babylon, as well as the undisputed political ruler, everyone did as he was told, or, at the very least, almost everyone. A confrontation was unavoidable, because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were among the officials present at this massive gathering. When everyone else in the room bowed down, these three men did not. Some Chaldeans saw the three Hebrew boys standing tall among all those who'd prostrated themselves and ran to Nebuchadnezzar to tattle, much like children in church, looking around during prayer time to see whose eyes are open. Daniel chapter 3, verses 8-12 through 12. At that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought malicious accusations against the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever! You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Jealousy drips from their accusation against the three Jews who have risen to positions of power despite their captivity. These petty court officials saw an opportunity to destroy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because their faith forbade them from worshiping any god other than the true God of Israel, and they did not pass it up. Nebuchadnezzar erupted in a rage when he heard the news. It's surprising that he gave the accused a chance to respond to the charges leveled against them. That he did may indicate his regard for them. But make no mistake, the king would accept only one response, total capitulation. They'd either worship the massive gold idol or be burned alive. Despite his earlier praise for the Hebrew God, Nebuchadnezzar added, who is the God who can deliver you from my power? The king's question, as before, would be answered eventually. Daniel chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these three men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, fall down and worship the image which I have made. Very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? These valiant Jewish men defied the king's direct order and placed themselves in the hands of God. Their response is impressive. If the God we serve exists, he can save us from the furnace of blazing fire. Even if he does not save us, we want you to know as king that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue. In other words, they said, we'd rather fear our God than your furnace any day. Even if he decides to let us burn, we will still serve the living God rather than your dead idol. Priceless. They preferred death to unfaithfulness to God and had no doubt planned for the possibility of this day for a long time. Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar's level of rage when his authority was defied is difficult to imagine, but apparently his face was livid. He gave orders to heat the furnace seven times more than was customary to match his fury. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tossed into the flames, the radiant heat was so great that the men carrying them were killed. No doubt wearing flammable clothing, the faithful Hebrews had no hope, unless hope itself intervened. Daniel chapter 3, verses 19-23 through 23. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and his facial expression changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then he gave a command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. He commanded certain strong men in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these three men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their turbans, and their other clothes, and were thrown into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, the flame of fire killed the men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. Nebuchadnezzar was astounded to see that not only were the men walking around in the fire unharmed, but that there were four of them. The fourth appeared to be a god's son, implying that he was either the pre-incarnate Christ or an angel. When the king realized the men he'd sentenced had been divinely rescued, he summoned them, and not a hair on their heads was singed. Being thrown into Nebuchadnezzar's deadly fire had proven to be a piece of cake. Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 through 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king looked and was astounded, and he jumped up and said to his counselors, did we not throw three men who were tied up into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, Certainly, O king. He answered, Look, I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of there, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered around them and saw that in regard to these men, the fire had no effect on their bodies. Their hair was not singed, their clothes were not scorched or damaged, even the smell of smoke was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants who believed in, trusted in, and relied on him. They violated the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language that speaks anything offensive against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
shall be cut into pieces and their houses be made a heap of rubbish, for there is no other god who is able to save in this way. Then the king caused Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. We are astounded by their faith in the one true God. Their response in the midst of the trial confirmed three things. Their unwavering belief in the God of the Bible, their trust in the God who is who he says he is and will do what he says he will do, and their faith as revealed by their reliance on the only one who had the power to deliver them from evil. Their recognition of God over the world's most powerful king resulted in the revelation of God's supreme power to unbelievers. Their faith shows that God is capable of delivering us from our own problems and trials. As Christians, we know that God is capable of delivering. We also know that He does not always act in this manner. According to Romans 5, God may allow trials and difficulties in our lives to build our character, strengthen our faith, or for other unknown reasons. We may not always understand why we are going through a trial, but God simply asks that we trust Him, even when it's difficult. Job, despite experiencing incredible pain, almost insurmountable agony and suffering, was able to say, Though He slay me, yet will I hope in Him. We also know that God does not always guarantee that we will never suffer or die, but He does promise to always be with us. We should learn that in times of adversity and persecution, we should adopt the attitude of these three young men. But even if He does not, we want you to know, O King, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. Without question, these are some of the most courageous words ever spoken. The fact that the fire did not consume Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego astounded Nebuchadnezzar. The point is that we walk by faith. We may face fiery persecution, but we can be confident that He is with us. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He will keep us going. He will eventually deliver us. He will save us forever. The main takeaway from the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is that we will never be able to bring the world to Christ by becoming like it. As these three men did, we should reveal to the world a higher power, a greater purpose, and a higher morality than the world in which we live. We can reveal the one who can deliver us from the fiery furnace if we are placed in it. Remember the Apostle Paul's powerful yet comforting words. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16-18 through 18. When we are persecuted or in pain, we can have hope because we know that this life is not the end. There is life after death. That is His assurance to all who love and obey Him. Knowing that we will spend eternity with God allows us to rise above the pain and suffering we experience in this life. The Bible also shares the story of a man that God was very proud of by the name of Job. To watch that story, click here.